Good morning. I'd like to reflect with you on the first reading from Acts of the Apostles, 13th chapter, verses 44 through 52, which was for the Saturday, the fourth week of Easter. Previous uh, few days, we've been hearing Paul uh, give uh, an exhortation uh, in the synagogue in Antioch in Pisidia. So today we find out what happens at the conclusion of his exhortation. At the conclusion of his exhortation, he spoke of the resurrection of Jesus and the forgiveness of sins. And so many people began to believe in him. But then they gathered the following week uh, on the Sabbath again. And here's what the reading says. On the following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers and the leading men of the city, stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium, the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Paul and Barnabas had great success proclaiming God's accompaniment of the Jewish people in salvation history. He spoke also of King David, whom God appointed, and that from David's line, Jesus would be born. He was the Savior. Paul then went on to explain how Jesus came in the flesh how he suffered in the flesh under Pontius Pilate, how he died, and how he rose from the dead. Like St. Peter, who preached on the day of Pentecost, Paul also made reference to Psalm 16 uh, about um, God not allowing his Holy One to undergo corruption. Now, rather than corruption in the flesh, Jesus had been raised from the dead, and he would offer forgiveness of sins and justification to anyone who would believe in him. And this was offered to the Jewish people. And many people responded very favorably. And so then the next sa Sabbath, they all gathered again with great enthusiasm. But just as the Sanhedrin began to be jealous of Peter and John and the other apostles in Jerusalem, and then began to persecute them and tell them not to speak about the holy name of Jesus, we see something similar happening here. Paul and Barnabas speak out boldly when the, crowd, when, when the crowds were filled with jealousy and the Jewish leaders were filled with jealousy and tried to contradict them. But what did Paul and Barnabas do? All they could do is propose the good news of salvation. They couldn't impose it upon the Jewish people. Faith is a gift, and we have to be willing to receive the gift. But when they didn't, what did they do? Did they give, simply give up? No, Paul and Barnabas had a mission to quote the, uh, from God. They were like the Blues Brothers. We're on a mission from God. But they went out. They continued and said, okay, well, who else here would be like to be believe? And so they turned to the Gentiles. They had to propose to the Jewish people first because they were God's own. But that doesn't mean that just because they were God's own that the message was restricted to them. We too have to be like Paul and Barnabas, unwilling to give up on our mission, even if at first we don't have great success. Many people will reject us. But we have been touched by the Lord, and our joy is a great joy, which cannot be kept to ourselves. We must share it. We must, of course, listen like the crowds to the word of God and be disciples. We are always disciples. But the Holy Father, Pope Francis, speaks of being missionary disciples. We are disciples first, but then we have to share the good news. And that's what Paul and Barnabas did. And how did the Gentiles react? St. Luke tells us the Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and they glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region.
This is what the Word of God, the incarnate Word of God, offers us, eternal life. And when people receive this gift, what do they do? They praise God. They glorify God. I wonder if we do that or whether instead we take this word for granted or it seems so monotonous and tiresome because we've heard it. Is it life-giving for us? Does it lead us to glorify God? And of course, as the word continued to spread, just as in Jerusalem, there was persecution. Saul himself persecuted the early church, including Stephen. And Stephen, after his death, the church was persecuted and dispersed. Well, Paul and Barnabas are persecuted. The, the Jewish people incited the leading women and men of the city to stir up a crowd against them. And so they shook the dust from their feet, a way of saying, we're moving on from here. And they went on to Iconium. So the word of God continued to go forth. And what was their disposition? It wasn't, oh, those people back there, they were terrible, or boy, we sure weren't treated well. What was their reaction? The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. Just like the apostles rejoiced that they had been found worthy to suffer for the sake of the name early in Acts of the Apostles, or after Stephen um, was persecuted, they were still filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the driving force behind the church's missionary work. And so the word of God goes out in spite of opposition, and it brings us joy. Let us pray this morning to the Holy Spirit, that he may come and fill our hearts with joy, and that we might share that joy with those we meet. God bless you.